Well, welcome again to the Mesa City Council meeting for the evening of April the 4th of the year 2022. I'll note that all of our council is present for this meeting. Uh, we will begin this meeting with an invocation offered by Marinelle Ryan with the Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'i of Mesa, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. O oh, thou kind Lord, thou hast created all humanity from the same stock. Thou hast decreed that all shall belong to the same household. In thy holy presence there all thy servants and all mankind are sheltered beneath thy tabernacle. All have gathered together at thy table of bounty. All are illumined through the light of thy providence. O oh God, thou art kind to all. Thou hast provided for all to shelter all, conferrest life upon all. Thou hast endowed each and all with talents and faculties, and all are submerged in the ocean of thy mercy. O thou kind Lord, unite all. Let the religions agree and make the nations one, so that they may see each other as one family and the whole earth as one home. May they all live together in perfect harmony. O oh God, raise aloft the banner of the oneness of mankind. O oh God, establish the most great peace. Cement thou, O oh God, the hearts together, O oh thou kind Father, God. Gladden our hearts through the fragrance of thy love. Brighten our eyes with the lights of thy guidance. Delight our ears with the melody of thy word and shelter us all in the stronghold of thy providence. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. Thou art the forgiving. And thou art the one who overlooketh the shortcomings of all mankind. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is uh, awards and recognitions. Tonight we have one, proc one proclamation on, on the awards and recognitions agenda. Uh, the Week of the Young Child is designed to celebrate uh, the organizations, teachers, and policies that support early learning opportunities for all of our young children. From First Things First to the National Association for the Education of Young Children, national, state, and local groups are focused on the future of our youngest residents. So tonight, I proclaim April 2nd through 8th of this year, 2022, as the Week of the Young Child in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, joining us tonight via Zoom to accept this proclamation and to tell us more about the Week of the Young Child is Dr. Annapura Ganesh from First Things First. Dr. Ganesh, thank you for all you do for our community and uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Good evening and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happy week of the young child. On behalf of the Early Childhood Commit a community, your vision, passion, and dedication to Mesa's youngest children is very much appreciated. My name is Annapurna Ganesh. I am a faculty member and the program director of early childhood education at Mesa Community College and a regional partnership council member for the First Things First Southeast Maricopa region. As Arizona's early childhood agency, First Things First is the only state funded source dedicated exclusively to the beginning of the education continuum. First Things First invests early childhood funds in programs and services that address the development, education, and health needs of children birth to age five at the state and local levels. We know from evidence that quality early learning programs result in short and long-term economic benefits to individuals and communities. This year, the National Week of the Young Child is being celebrated this week from April 2nd to April 8th. First Things First has partnered with the Arizona Association for the Education of Young Children to join the annual nationwide celebration that focuses attention on early learning and the education and the educators who support the positive development of young children. 
This is a time when we can reach out in our communities to celebrate young children and their families and acknowledge the contributions made up on behalf of young children by parents, educators, caregivers, including healthcare workers and community members. Young children are our future, and there are many ways that the City of Mesa community members can come together for children. For example, support early literacy in initiatives, thank teachers who educate and nurture young children, work toward public policies that benefit young children. On behalf of the early childhood community, I express my sincere gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh, and we're very proud of uh, all you do at Mesa Community College and uh, throughout the Valley, but especially representing our community, so thank you. Uh, the first item on our agenda is uh, passing the consent agenda. I want to invite Ms. Lily King forward to read the consent agenda. Hi, Mayor and Council members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted on with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a council member or a citizen requests in which in which the event the item will be removed from, from the consent agenda and considered on as a separate item. Item two, approval of minutes of previous meetings as written. Items three A, B, and C, act on liquor license application for American Patriots Writers Club one day events, April 22nd, May 13th, and May 27th, 922 South Country Club Drive. Item three C, act on liquor license application for Arizona Aviation Historical Group one day event, April 23rd, 4626 East Fighter Aces Drive. Item 3E, act on liquor license application for Cultural Coalition Incorporated one day event on April 23rd, 2202 West Rio Salada Parkway. Item 3F, act on liquor license application for St. Timothy's Roman Catholic Parish one day event, April 29th, 1730 West Guadalupe Road. Item 3G, act on liquor license application for the Dobson Association Incorporated one day event, May 13th, 2719 South Reyes. Act, item 3H, act on liquor license application for YZ's Karaoke Cafe, 1350 South Longmore Road. Item 3I, act on liquor license application for Aura Brewing Company, 210 West Main Street. Item 3J, act on liquor license application for Bobby Q's Ribs and Blues, 1610 South Stapley Drive. Item 3K, act on liquor license application for Bigo Taco Hernandez Maricosas Bar, 420 East Southern Avenue. Item 4A, act on contract to purchase a color copier for the print shop in the business services department. Item 4B, act on award, act to award one additional vendor to three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for language translation services for various city departments. Item 4C, act on contract to purchase Kronos Workforce timekeeping software for li licenses for the Office of ERP Management. Item 4D, act on dollar limit increase to the term contract for emergency medical supplies and pharmaceuticals for the Mesa Fire Department and Medical Department, Fire and Medical Department. Item 4E, act on contract to purchase an electric forklift for the Mesa Fire and Medical Department. Item 4F, act on contract to purchase iron sights for Glock weapons for the Mesa Police Department. This purchase is funded by the Public Safety Sales Tax Funds. Item 4G, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for 37 millimeter and 40 millimeter less lethal launching devices for the Mesa Police Department. The initial purchase is funded by the Public Safety Sales Tax and General Fund Operating Budget. Item 4H, act on dollar limit increase to term contract for light duty automotive body repair services for the fleet services department. Item 4I, act on contract to purchase network core equipment and services for the Department of Innovation Technology. Item 5A, act on resolution regarding ZON 21-01113 for property located east of Gilbert Road on the north side of Brown Road, site plan review to allow for the development of a medical office building. Item 5B, act on resolution approving and authorizing the City of Mesa Police Department to submit grant applications to the Arizona Governor Office of Highway Safety for fiscal year 2023 grant funds and authorizing the City Manager to accept awarded funds for various Mesa Police Department projects. Item 5C, act on resolution approving and authorizing the City Manager to enter into a grant agreement with ADOT for certain runway and taxiway rehabilitations at Falcon Field Airport. Item 5D, act of resolution appro approving and authorizing the city manager to terminate the development agreement recorded November 15, 2006 regarding property located on the west and east sides of Ellsworth Road and on the north and south sides of Pecos Road. 
Item 5E, Act on Resolution Modifying Fees and Charges for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 6A, Introduction of Ordinance Amending Table 1 in Title 5, Chapter 17 of the Mesa City Code, entitled Mesa Development Impact Fees by Removing the Stormwater Drainage Impact Fee from the Table to Confirm the Discontinuation of this Fee. Item 6B, Introduction of Ordinance regarding ZON 21-01219 for property located on the southeast corner of McCallops Road and Country Club Drive. Rezone and site plan review to develop a restaurant with, with the drive through Item 6C, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 21-01116 for property generally located west of power on the south side of McKellips Road. Rezone and site plan modifications to allow for development of a daycare facility with outdoor service activities. Item 6D, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 21-00356 for property generally located east of Power Road on the north side of Ray Road. Rezone with a planned area development overlay and site plan review to allow for development of an industrial building. Item 7A, act on a subdivision plat Valleywise Community Health Care Center, generally located west of Stapley Drive on the north side of Main Street. Item 7B, act on subdivision plat lots N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, and N6, Gateway North, generally located north of Power Road on the east side of Power Road. Mayor and Council Member, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Ms. King. Uh, Ms. Mosley, do we have any, I, I know I have one blue card and that's on agenda item 8B, but do we have any requests to speak on an item on the consent agenda? No request, Mayor. All right, thank you. I note that Ms. Spilsbury has made a motion for approval, seconded by Mr. Freeman. Please vote. Thank you. Uh, the consent agenda passes unanimously. The next item on our agenda is item 8C, and it's actually, I, I'm sorry, it's items 8A through 8C, uh, and this involves a public hearing <clears throat> and to take action on, the, and on, on a minor general plan amendment and zoning case on the respective resolution and ordinances related to a mixed-use development at Longbow. I hereby declare the public hearing open. Uh, so, as we said, Ms. Mosley, I, I think we, do we have a total of two people that have submitted uh, uh, statements to you, and then a, a third is the blue card that, of a person here live and in person, correct? Correct, yes. All right, why don't we uh, begin by inviting <coughs> Mr. Green forward, uh, and then we'll, we'll have the two statements read after that. Welcome, Mr. Green. Uh, please give us uh, your name and address, and you have three minutes. Yes. Um, my name is John Green. I live at 3048 North Sonoran Hills in uh, Los Endes. Um, and um, I was born and raised not too far down from Longbow. I currently reside there with my wife and four kids in Los Endes. Um, I'm speaking here today in support of the proposed mixed-use retail project on behalf of the ownership of the Hilton Hotel, 12 West Brewery, and the overwhelming support of people on next door in favor of this project. I'm also a board member for Visit Mesa, and as you can see, I care about and am an active advocate for my neighborhood, my community, and the city of Mesa. I do have a history with this site. I'm by no means associated with the applicant, nor am I receiving any form of compensation for being so vocal. Brian McCormick, the owner of 12 West, and I have formed a relationship um, with the developer to make sure that our project traffic flows uh, coincide. Several years ago, I had the subject property in escrow, and the site was master planned jointly with input in favor from Falconfield Airport staff, economic development staff, city staff, elected officials, and my development team. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, timing was not on our favor. The project presented today is very similar in terms of where the retail and residential are located. According to a noted Valley economist, Elliot Pollack, the Phoenix metro area must be built, must, must build its way out of the current housing deficit quickly or face economic catastrophe down the road. Affordabil affordability is falling, but it's about to plummet. There's virtually no vacancy or available units. Supply has not kept pace with demand and our success as a community in attracting jobs and people has not matched uh, by a sufficient increase in supply a housing supply for those new employees and continued shortage of housing is going to drive up the cost and threaten economic development efforts. To those that I have spoke with and oppose, I've reminded them that they're located in Mesa, which is the third largest city in terms of population in Arizona. 
Las Sendas, Red Mountain Ranch, Mountain Bridge are some of the largest master plan communities in Mesa with well over 7,000 homes. These, communi these communities only have a handful of sit-down restaurants to choose from within the area. When I have a date night with my wife or, or if family or friends want to go out, we have to find ourselves driving 15 to 20 minutes away to Scottsdale or Gilbert for a higher end culinary experience. I want to spend money in Mesa. The applicant proposing is proposing 6.5 acres of retail. I have met with them and they've conveyed what the community has been telling, uh, telling me. I have looked over their site plan from the applicant and was glad to see not a handful of drive-through, fast-through pad sites. The, the developer has listened to and worked with the community. Changes have been made at the request of the community for lower density, better parking ratios, and a decorative wall along Wrecker Road, which equates to an increase in project costs and a loss of them of $5 million in valuation. Council members, I please urge you to vote in favor of this project. If not, this land will be sold tomorrow to an industrial buyer and this will not contribute in solving the housing crisis and the community will, will lose out on one of its last opportunities to have a retail experience. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green, and impressive time management. <laughs> well done. Uh, Ms. Mosley, will you please read the, uh, the statements from uh, those who aren't here? Yes, so the first one I re we received is from Monica Malat in support. She says, most areas of Mesa are landlocked, but Northeast Mesa has enormous growth potential. The idea of new restaurants and shops in the vicinity of Longbow and Wrecker have many Mesa residents very excited and hopeful to have more choices of places to shop and eat, rather than having to go to Scottsdale or Gilbert. Gilbert was once known as a one-horse town. Look at it now. Las Sendas was just a mountain. Look at it now. It is beyond my comprehension that a few homeowners would rather see this choice Mesa land being used for industrial purposes rather than seeing it used for a mixed-use retail apartment complex which would turn that entire area into a thriving location for family and friends to enjoy. I ask the Mesa City Council to approve the mixed-use project. Thank you. And then I have one comment from Marilyn Ritalik, who says um, she opposes drive through restaurants. All right. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Uh, do any council members wish to address this item? Mayor, I was wondering if we could invite Mr. Reese to do a, a quick update. Sure. Well, uh, Mr. Reese is the uh, developer's representative. Uh, Mr. Luna has asked that you give us a, a brief overview. Is that we right? A, we have a blue card. Okay. Why don't... Go ahead, Mr. Reese. We'll, uh... I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. I mean, I'm Mr. sorry, Reese Anderson. Mr. Reese. I, I was not entirely <laughs> wrong, was I? Mr. That was Reese? my fault. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, welcome. Why members of the council. Uh, zoning case. <clears throat> You know, the, uh, that's what I get for having two surnames, don't yeah. I? And I'm honored. Uh, my father, for those of you who know him, is a great man. I'm honored to have that name, too. Uh, let me start, I guess, by following protocol, which is my name, Reese Anderson. And my address for your record is 1744 South Val Vista, number 217 here in Mesa. And I'm here tonight with Mike Truman and Bert Kempford from DHI Communities, which is an affiliated company with DR Horton. All of us know that quality company. And uh, Mike and I are available to answer any questions you have. I know there's a basketball game tonight. And as a basketball fan, <clears throat> I'm going to be brief. But I would ask the council to give this full consideration like you would any important case. But if I speak fast, it's because I'm a basketball fan. Fair enough? So <clears throat> on your screen, you can. I'm going to go through just a few slides with you. This is Longbow. It's been uh, planned and approved since 2002. In the light blue outline is parcel four. That's what we're talking about today. Here's the, the kind of the context of where we are with the Ridgeview neighborhood immediately to our east. And then you, you of course, know the uh, bike park right there. This is really what you see on site today. Start in the upper left, and we'll just kind of move clockwise. You see Amazon, then the golf club, the new hotel there, which I forgot the label, but it's there. Uh, I think many of you are familiar with Sunshine Acres, uh, right up there to the north. And then we have Fat Cat Sprouts and uh, the development that's there. 12 Rest Brewing is pr proposing to locate their brewery and a new restaurant there, which John Green spoke about. And then you see our site, again, outlined in blue. Coming around the corner, you can see some new proposed office, warehouse, and, and storage areas. 
Longbow, as it's, as it's developed over the years, has really been growing up as a mixed-use project. And you see these with the retail, the entertainment, you see the hotel happening, Amazon. And so while maybe some of us thought it really was envisioned as a pure industrial, it really is a mixed use, and that's how it's been growing up. So we look at this project here as a simple extension of that mixed use going south along Record Road. Quickly, here's some chronology. We held our first neighborhood meeting back in September. Then we had a designer view board meeting here in this building. Then we had an in-person neighborhood meeting at the gol golf club there at Longbow. The case was continued for several months while uh, the city hired John Godek, a well-known facilitator, to do some analysis. And then we had a planning and zoning board meeting in February. Case was continued again <clears throat> while uh, Council Member Luna, Chris Brady, Nana Appia, and others worked diligently with the neighbors and us with them in tow, working all together to make some changes to the project. So we had the introduction on March 4th, or March 21st, and here we are tonight, April 4th. This is what we identified from our neighborhood outreach. There was opposition to multifamily, opposition to three-story buildings, parking concerns, not light concerns, noise concerns, and then a general concern the city didn't value their input. When John Godek, the facilitator, again hired by the city, went out, he identified similar concerns. And I was glad that he identified those, and there really wasn't something surprising to us. This is that same list. You're welcome to read it. I, I don't want to bore you with it, but it's essentially the same that we had. So <clears throat> through the leadership of Council Member Luna, Nana Appia, and others meeting with the residents, we're provided with two lists. And that's why I've got list one through four and a second list one through four. And the first one were reduce your buildings on, reduce the height of buildings five and six. Construct a, a decorative wall along Wrecker Road. <clears throat> they wanted us to raise the height of their wall on their side of the street and then also to eliminate a dog park. We were able to do one in, items one and two. Three and four we weren't able to do, and I'll talk more about those if you want, but I just want to focus on one and two tonight. Then we got the second list, which was no antennas or satellite dishes on the balconies. They wanted to see final elevations, make them match the commercial better. They wanted to prohibit all drive through restaurants on the property and no major changes to the site plan without council approval. So what did we do? <clears throat> we reduced the building heights on buildings five and six. And I'll show you that in just a second. That decreased the density, increased the parking ratios. We agreed to construct the decorative wall along uh, Wrecker Road. And then again, I'm not, I, I won't spend time on three and four unless any of you would like me to. But the second list that we got after the first one, it was uh, we agreed to the good neighbor policy. And in, in addition to the satellite dishes, we put in there the shared parking, which is now encapsulated in one of the conditions of approval. We provided the final building elevations. Remember too, not only are we working with resident input, we're dealing with city staff input, design review board input, and the Longbow, Longbow DRC. So the development review committee there also has input. So there's a lot of people that we're juggling with as far as getting these elevations approved. We agreed to a, a stipulation that restricts drive-throughs to being back away from Wrecker Road. So <clears throat> now someone may say, well, Reese, your site plans always showed the drive-throughs away from Wrecker Road. Well, that was done on purpose from the very beginning because of one, our experience with this city council, two, our experience with the city staff and their early input in this project. And so to say you've already moved them away, yes, it's true, but we did that early on because we were trying to be respectful of the comments we got. We also agreed to a stipulation that says all changes come back, all major changes come back. So what does that look like? Here's buildings five and six with the red stars. These are the two closest to the residential neighborhood, reduced from three stories to two stories. Simply put, uh, council members, if there was not a street between us, this setback is three times what the code would require. So imagine that we're right next touching property lines. Now with this reduction in height, we're three times greater than what the code requires. Significant change. With that, density decreased, parking ratios increased. Here's the renderings and elevations of the commercial, which were well received by the DRB, the neighbors, and staff. What did we do? We matched those with the residential. And so here's the two-story elevation. Again, the highest point on there is 28 feet. So if I'm standing there on a balcony, I'm 
I don't know how tall I am, but it's, I'm probably only 18, 20 feet off the ground. Here's what the three-story uh, buildings look like now. And the rest of the elevations are there in your packet. I won't bother you with them. Now, here's the screen wall we added. Now, the red line, don't, get, don't, don't misunderstand me that it's just a straight line. This wall undulates. I just wanted to give you the general concept of where that wall is located. And if you want to see those details, please, I'd direct you to your site plan. It'll show that detail of how that wall works. Here's the location of the drive throughs The sole issue that I know that's left is whether or not all drive throughs should be eliminated. These yellow stars represent where those drive throughs are. You can see they're a long ways back from Wrecker Road. Now, the reason that I believe, and I've had several conversations with these good neighbors, is their experience with the existing restaurant there informs their life choices, the way they view, view things. And this current, this is the in and out that's there. And when I measure that distance, it looks like it's from the building to their rear property lines is about 180 feet. Pretty close right there. Now remember, this site is zoned today light industrial. drive through restaurants are an allowed use in light industrial. So if I just went through a normal site plan process, you could end up with a handful of drive throughs all along Wrecker Road today without council input. So... <clears throat> When I go back and I start to analyze this, and here I've zoomed in a little bit more on this commercial setting, the closest window is 450 feet away. So a significant, a significant increase in distance. So not only is it the distance, but more importantly, in my opinion, is these are screened by buildings. So any of the concerns we have about noise, light, glare, these have been, been addressed. Now, I... Here's, here's something I've learned in my uh, conversations with a lot of, of good folks, which is the discussion about possible drive through locations is overshadowing the developer's desire to have quality sit-down restaurants. And that's what these blue stars represent. That one right there in the left side is right next to the golf course in the new 12 West Brewing. We see that as a great site for a high-quality sit-down steakhouse, something similar which would share views of the golf course as well as Red Mountain. Those other ones are right on the corner and have outdoor seating right there. So I see two really good spots and even more, but we don't have user names for you today. And the reason for that is the uncertainty of just this project. So marketing has not started. If approved tonight, marketing will start immediately tomorrow. In our conversations with the neighbors, Mike Truman um, has said and expressed to them his desire for a high quality project and that he would treat this as if he lived in the Ridgeview neighborhood. And he's made that commitment to them, and we make it to you on the record tonight. Now, where does all that leave us? You received on March 21st a revised council memo that added several new conditions to the case. I just blew them up here a little bit because my eyes are getting old. Maybe some of yours are too. Here's what they say. Prior to submittal of a permit, shared parking agreement. Compliance with the good neighbor policy prohibits satellite dishes. Elevations and renderings uh, conform to the design review board approved by the planning director. In addition, any drive-through or relocation of a drive-through has to come back to the council. Now, lest you think, and if those of you that watched the PNZ meeting, there were a lot of folks there. Lest you think the entire world is against us, here's some letters of support. And then I just direct your attention to what is here this evening and, and the very few numbers that are here. To me, it's a testament of the hard work that all of us have put in, including Council Member Luna, Nana Apia, City Manager, in coming to a, a point that we can all be proud of this as a win-win-win for the city, the developer, and the residents. So with, before you tonight is this case. It's been a recommendation of approval from the Planning and Zoning Board. All your city departments that have reviewed it are also supportive of it with no concerns. We've read the conditions of approval and are supportive of these, even the revised ones. And I, I probably missed a question that one or two of you have, but I'll end it there and urge your support. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, we have any questions for Mr. Anderson? Mr. Luna. Uh, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. Not Mr. Reese, but no, that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Now, as far as those two uh, buildings to the northeast that you had stardom, are, yes, are we putting in a, a special grocery store in those buildings, or uh, what is Mike Truman thinking? I know he hasn't uh, definitively defined what that's going to be. So um, 
On your screen now, you should see the commercial uh, area of this project. And Councilmember Luna, if I understand you right, those two yellow stars are possible locations where someone could have a drive up window, mm -hmm. a drive through window. I see the, the right star on your screen, it would be the eastern one, perfect location for a smoothie shop, a coffee shop, something mm -hmm. like that. The other one to me is a possible location for a, a, a drive through Go back to the other slide, the one with the blue stars. The blue stars, yes sir. Those. Okay, thank you. So the one on the far west side, we see that and that's targeted for a sit down, quality sit down restaurant. Again, mm -hmm. right on the golf course, views of Red Mound, It'd be a beautiful spot for something like that. Okay, for the two, bl the two blue ones on the, the north. The two ones on the corner are right there on purpose because they have that outdoor uh, seating. Okay. And then you can see there on the landscape plan all that decorative uh, landscaping right there on the corner. Okay. To me, that's just a prime spot for that type of... There could be others, but to me, mm -hmm. those are the three most likely mm -hmm. spots right here. So, you know, the major sticking point has always been the drive-through. I think it yep. uh, worked really well with the residents, and yep. um, they prefer having a a high quality restaurant, it, that may accommodate and meet the needs of that. But uh, as you can imagine, there's um, there's some resistance. Should you come back and change that? Would, would what kind of, would maybe Nana, can you can describe or, or Rachel? Oh, how would, would we do that? I'll defer to Mr. Oppie, but I'll tell you okay. right now, we would be back here talking to you again. Yes. In terms of a, um, modif would we do an administrative change on that? Could you do that? if they decided to come back and change that? No, a mayor, council member Luna. So as part of the conditions of approval, any change to the drive-through locations would require further review and recommendation by the planning and zoning board and then approval by the city council. So it would have to go back through a public process again. That's correct. M mayor, council, that's correct. But let me clarify. We said in a drive-through location to move the drive-throughs along RECA. So if they come back right now to eliminate the drive throughs within the development, that will be administrative modification. I think I want to clarify that. Yeah. So right now you're looking at, you're looking at these two drive throughs If they come back to eliminate the drive throughs that will be administrative staff review. So it wouldn't have to go back? It to wouldn't have to go through planning zone okay. and city council process. And we can have that in record though? Yes. Okay. okay. And you're good with that, Reese? So what I heard, and which I'm in full agreement with, is if, and I'll let me go to a slide with the yellow star. If one of those yellow stars changed to a sit-down restaurant, that would be an administrative change. Okay. And that's because we're moving in a direction desired by all. Yeah, yeah. It, on the other hand, if I wanted to take one of those yellow stars and move it out to Wrecker Road, you and I would be talking right. about we're, that. Right, we're not going to do that. Right? We're not going to do that. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's been the, the, the major sticking point. Yeah, we, you know, to, to add a bit more, if, if I could, just yes, 30 please. seconds. When we look at the overall job of the council to balance interests, mm -hmm. to find compromise, here, look at everything that's been asked of us and what we've done. And so when we balance these interests, we know from our experience, right, locating one right on record is not the best because where those neighbors are. So as, as all of us attempt to balance interests, locating it longer or further away is the pro more appropriate word, screening it with buildings, is that balancing of interest, is, is the compromise that's here. So I don't know what every item is worth, but to me, I think the, the collaborativeness here has accomplished 95, 97% of what was asked of us. Mm -hmm. This is significant uh, collaborative effort by everyone. Do you want the speaker to speak? Or? Yes, at some point we need to let, hear from the, the next blue card. So if we, there's no further questions for Mr. Anderson, we'll can, move can on. Can he hold that. on? Because I might, I might ask him just for clarification. Okay. Okay. Sure. Mr. Anderson, grab a seat and yes, might invite you back up. Uh, we do have a request to speak from Randy Rostacone. I apologize if I mispronounced your name, Randy. Okay, I'll correct you. Okay, thank you. Mayor, council members, uh, my name is Randy Rostron. I'm at 3140 North Olympic. Hard to believe... Uh, after all these years starting out across the street with Sprouts to where we are now, and it's my final shot to talk to y'all, because this is about it. All right, a um, lot of great points were brought up, a lot of changes made. I, I appreciate Councilmember Luna working with the staff there. Sorry I wasn't able to meet with you or our group. Um, couple things I'd like to bring up. 
I understand having gone through the development on the other side, this isn't the end. We have the lighting issues with the signage. We have the signage and the lighting off there. We still got the six or seven of our homes are just glowing with the signage across the street that doesn't turn off all day long um, or all night. Um, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. I apologize. We met a couple years ago, showed the video of it, how it lights up our all backyard. Um, our bedrooms, all everything from all the lights when they come in. This isn't the end, and I really appreciate what's been done to this point, but as it stands, from what I understand, the city hasn't changed anything on lighting and how it's broadcast and makes our backyards just glow. And I don't know about that retail side or that corner and where that signage is gonna go and how the signs are gonna be mounted on that, if it's anything like the north side, the rest of my neighbors, even though we've got some concessions on the three-story building apartments, we're going to be living what I live in, which is, seems like, um, what is it called? Fremont Street in Vegas? That's how much light, because it's all lit all night long. And uh, nothing's ever been changed about it. A couple of the uh, tenants across the street have turned those off, their lights or their signage off about 10 minutes after they close which is great. Verizon and the other three next to them, they sit there and they glow all night long. And they light, might as well not have any lights in our backyard. First part is done now. I understand you're probably gonna pass us tonight. Got it. Please, we gotta live with the light every day. I need you to really consider that and see if you can do something for the north side where my home's at that's still dealing with this to today because nothing's changed. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. So uh, why don't we uh, discuss lighting briefly, because it, it seems to me that the, the, the current project is a residential project right. that I'm sure, sure the folks that live in that residential project don't want light coming through their window any more than the folks on the other side, but could we, uh, uh, is lighting a, uh, a, an issue or a concern in this project? From Mayor, council members, Rachel. so as part of the design review process, we do review a photometric plan. So the, at that point is when we will review the light levels surrounding the property. Um, I do believe that some of the issue, and I, I forget this gentleman's name that just spoke, uh, was centered around the actual signage as well, yeah. the lighting on the signage, which that is reviewed through a separate permit application. And um, you live to the north across from in and out and the retail, is that correct? Yeah, I lived almost directly. Got it. Just okay, thank you. Yeah, I think the lighting here for these neighbors will be very different because this is a residential project. But uh, I, I, remind us again, Rachel, when is that going to be considered? So we're considering the, the site plan and the zoning with today, but we have the design review case, an associated design review case that approves the elevations and the photometric plan. So that's in, currently in review. That gets approved administratively by the planning director. So that's something definitely that we will take a closer look at and that we can um, create you know, additional conditions of approval if needed. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Luna, would you like uh, Mr. Anderson or anyone else to sure. discuss that further? Mr. Anderson, can you can you uh, pr provide us some um, enlighten, enlighten us about the lighting? Enlightenment about the light? As far as, as far as the commercial, can can we do something relative to that? Yeah. So um, thank you, Councilman Lynn, for the question. So <clears throat> I don't know what standard the prior project to the north is approved under. What I do know is that today, the lighting standards say that you cannot have a greater bleed off of light from your project site greater than 0.5 candle foot. So, you know, the, the best way that I've always understood a candle foot is the light one candle puts out. Mm -hmm. That's half a candle foot is a very small amount. And so those plans of, of lights from whatever part of the project are just not allowed to bleed off the site. So if there's something going on that's inappropriate to the north, by all means, that would be a code enforcement issue. Here, we've made a full commitment since the beginning to comply completely with the lighting ordinance of the city of Mesa. So does that help answer the question? Yes, I believe yeah. so. 
Mr. Freeman. So, Reese, I'll call you Reese. Hey, please. <laughs> so let's just say the sit-down restaurants do come in effect, and, and can you go back to the Blue Stars? Yes, sir. And I think to the person's testimony on this, comments, would there be, and to Rachel as well, would there be signage placed on the corner that would illuminate across the street, perhaps into the neighborhood? That's what I'm asking. If, if a monument sign or something, well, not a monument, but signage for a sit-down restaurant, could that be incorporated maybe into the good neighbor policy or to help with his concerns? I, I'm happy to answer unless you'd like to hear from your staff first. We'll start with you and then Very we'll good. go to Rachel. So the answer, <clears throat> the answer is that there will be monument signs, and they likely will be lit. I don't see, I mean, in a, a good commercial setting, you want that, and you want attractive sign package, and you need it lit for nighttime use. The real issue, and I think the question that you're driving at is, what are the rules applicable to those signs? There's a difference between being visible and light bleeding over, and so you've got to draw that distinction. So something may be visible from a long ways away, but shedding light into a neighboring property, that's the real issue was what the, the light rules get at. Not, not just keeping it completely, you know, you can't see it at all. Does that help answer the question? I'm really into the nuances of lighting here. And I'm well, I'm assuming based on your uh, comments that the lighting in question is probably placed up higher on the building that shines across where you're talking a monument sign that's a lower profile to the street. So I, I would anticipate this project would have both monument signage and okay. building signage. But Councilman Freeman, those, those uh, signage permits get uh, applied for and approved separately through a comprehensive right. sign plan. And you, you likely yeah. know that. That has not even been thought of yet because of just where we are overall with the project. Our commitment here to everyone is full compliance with the lighting standards and, and to be sensitive to the residents across the street. Okay, thank you. Rachel, is there any comments from you? Or? Um, I'll just add that um, Mr. Anderson is correct. So there's, so we do have standards within our sign codes as far as lighting. And I, I haven't been purview to some of the conversations that Nana and the resident have discussed with the, the development to the north, but from conversations that I've had with citizens, it did have to do with signage placed high up on fat cats that was emitting a lot of light. Um, but we definitely will take a close look at the lighting in regards to this case and try to ensure that it's not um, impactful to the citizens. I think that answers my questions. Just as you move forward with the development, please keep this in mind. Yeah, thank Thanks. you, sir. Mr. Lono. Uh, thank you, Reese. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make a statement relative to this. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I wanna think, thank the Ridgecrest, Ridgeview um, community for being so active and engaged in this process. Uh, this has been a very interesting and a difficult case. And quite frankly, initially, I was not in support of this project moving forward. Uh, but after working with the developer and the Ridgeview residents uh, trying to move this, uh, they were very persistent and they were really engaged in trying to make this project their own. Uh, the developer changed the elevation in the project. Uh, they, 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 um, it was going to be initially a three-story building on record. They lowered it to two. Uh, they also changed the design of the building so that it would continue to, so that it would look upscale. Uh, so that it would reflect the community. Um, they also are going to be working with the commercial management department to make sure that the residents that are going to be living there, um, they follow a good neighbor policy, something that we've had in Northeast Mesa, so I appreciate that. Again, the architectural design has been modified to accommodate that. In fact, uh, Mr. Anderson worked diligently to provide the residents uh, recently the, what the new renderings were going to look like. and. Uh, uh, so they, they were became, they were upscaled. Now these apartments are their market rate, so they are going to be uh, what is expected in market rate pricing for for rental of the apartments. Um, again, but I, I but I have to stress how important it was for the Ridgeview residents, how hard they worked to get this process going, and working with professional staff, Dr. Apia. Uh, Mr. Brady working and having deep conversations on making it part of their community. Uh, the alternative, it could stay light industrial and we could have light, large industrial buildings having a lot of traffic going in and out. Um, and now we're going to have these apartment complexes 
uh, from 359 to two, uh, 359 to 339. Uh, the, the parking has been adjusted to meet some of the requests that were recommended by, by the residents over at um, Ridgeview. So, but I do really wanna thank the, the residents at Ridgeview for their hard work, for working with me, working with uh, our staff to make this uh, a, uh, a possible development in Northeast Mesa. So I'm going to be in support of this development. Uh, and so I will go ahead and make a motion to approve it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Luna. Uh, are any other council comments on this item? Uh, I, I will echo Mr. Luna's comments. I think when this project initially uh, got here, it needed some work. Uh, and so I, uh, I appreciate the, the neighbors uh, and their, their dogged uh, nature in, in uh, pointing out those things that could be improved upon. And uh, I appreciate the developer and, and Mr. Luna and everyone coming together to, to make this a better project than when it first arrived here. So, so I, I too will support the project. Um, so having said that, if there's no additional comments, I uh, will declare the public hearing closed. And we have a motion uh, made by Mr. Freeman, seconded by Mr. Thompson for approval of the project. Please uh, vote. Thank you, the motion passes unanimously. And again, uh, we declared that at the beginning of the hearing, but this is items 8A through 8C. Uh, next item on our agenda is items from citizens present. Ms. Mosley, do we have any requests to speak on this item? No request, Mayor. Thank you. That concludes the items on our agenda for this meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mr. Thompson and Mr. Luna. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. We are adjourned. Aye.